Good evening. Tonight uh, we're here. I'm just going to um, run the audio from last Sunday night's service um, so that you all can hear it. I do apologize that we did have uh, some <laughs> difficulties last night, um, but we'll get it to you this way so you can hear it. Um, so uh, here we have Brother Roger, and this will be the audio from last night. God bless you all, and uh, we definitely love having all you out there who listen to us and follow us on Ustream. So uh, here we go. God bless you. Bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, Give good things to them that ask him. And verse 12 says, Therefore all things, whatsoever you would do, or whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do you even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. This is the do rule. The do rule is the golden rule. The golden rule is the love rule. You know, love can be painful at times. Any amens? But love is bearable when we're in obedience. When we're obedient, then we can endure the pain of love. Our Savior, of course, died on the cross. Great pain he suffered, but he was able to endure it because he said, not my will but your will be done. And as you know, it was great agony before he went to the cross that our Lord went through, finding himself in that garden, praying three times, asking his brothers to pray also, needing the strength of God. And that is what we need to continue to do in these days that we live in as we close out and see God close out his time upon this earth and it's so close now that wow I'm beginning to taste heaven because heaven is so near I can taste it tonight 1st John 3 16 tells us hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us we ought to lay down our lives for our brethren Again, it's not my will, but your will be done. This needs to be the cry of our heart, because in a sense, I believe we're in a time of Gethsemane. Amen. I want you to know that faith stops when flesh starts, but flesh starts when faith starts. Flesh stops when faith starts. Faith is the only way we can move in the Spirit. And we need to stay in the mode of faith. And so I can repeat that subtitle, Is Your Time Card Punched? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Psalms 36, 5 says, Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, and thy faithfulness reacheth unto the clouds. Psalms 36, 7 says, How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God! Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. The world doesn't believe it can trust the love of God. I'll tell you right now that the world thinks that love is the pansy way. But as I did a quick study on the word wings, one of the definitions means protection like an army. When we come under the wings of the Lord, we're coming under the army of God. Amen. And I tell you, there's no greater protection than the army of God. Right. Just as our Lord and Savior is undefeated, champion, so are the angels of the Lord. Right. 
that do his bidding. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so quite often you hear Pastor Evan say to allow your angels to go to work. They will as we stay in the will of God. How many of you want the angels of the Lord working on your behalf? How many of you want the angels active and not just sitting around? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. You know, a lot of men and women today believe it is money that makes the world go around. But truthfully, it's love that makes both the world and the heavens go around. But love does provide money. Glory to God. In Psalms 19.1, it says, The heavens declare the glory of God. Just look up, amen? And the firmament showeth his handiwork. All you got to do is look some night and, and, and just look upon on a clear night the handiwork of Almighty God, and you'll see his glory. You'll see his love because those same stars that he created years ago are still there today. That same sun that he created years ago is still there today. That same moon that he created years ago is still there today. I'm going to take you now to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1, and if you know anything about Ephesians, it has to do with the riches of Almighty God. We are so enriched just coming into the kingdom of Almighty God, yet we do not realize that sometimes how much we have. You know, quite often it, they teach you that, you know, sometimes we say, what do I do, Lord? I'm not sure what to do. And a lot of times in our own homes, we have a library of books. A lot of times the wealth is just right there That's right. upon our shelves. That's right. And of course, the greatest wealth is the Word of God. But so often, as we understand, it sits on the shelf. It's getting dusty. But if we would go to that word, now I want you to know the devil's going to tell you many lies about that word. He's going to do everything he can to keep you to go into that word. But if we take the time to do that, God shows up on the scene and begins to reveal to us great and mighty things that we know not. And he encourages us for that day. Give us this day our daily bread. Amen. Hallelujah. But we've got to help ourselves. Hallelujah. To what God has provided. Hallelujah. Everything pertaining to life and godliness has been provided. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's read on. Ephesians 1, 3. Blessed or adorable be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us or prospered us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Christ who was our Redeemer, our Mediator, our Love Baptizer, and so many more things I could go on. That's how rich it is. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. A God of love wants us to be holy and without blame. Well, we have a perfect Savior that made a way for us. Amen? His name is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And because his perfect, perfect obedience, all he's saying to us is, Obey me. Press into that perfection. Don't give up. Well, you might say, well, boy, it sure is hard at times. God's made a way for us. God's made a way for us to be able to seek him, to knock on the door, to look for him. Amen? He's made a way for us to do this. Hallelujah. But it starts with the heart. Somebody say, it starts with the heart. As soon as we start with the heart, we punch in our time card for God. He sees that, that we're checking in. Every day we need to check in. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is always available 24-7. Hallelujah. Are we available to him? Hallelujah. He may call you to punch in in the early morning hour. Hallelujah. Will you punch in? Hallelujah. How many know that according to the scriptures, wisdom is, is in the early morning hours? Yes. We learn that in the book of Proverbs. Hallelujah. Let us be wise and understand that. Hallelujah. Glory. And understand that God is a good boss. And, and what he will reveal to you during that time, he will take care of you throughout the day. 
because that nourishment he gives you will cover all time lost of natural sleep. <laughs> That's our God. Hallelujah. Do you love him tonight? Amen. I know I love him. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. He called us and he chose us. He called us and he chose us. Hallelujah. It's interesting that the disciples, he called them. And when they followed, then he chose them. He named them. He knows your name tonight as you are here tonight to hear the word of God brought unto you. You are his disciple because you are here tonight to hear the word of God. Hallelujah. Be encouraged. Why don't you say tonight, I am a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because I am ready to be taught by him according to his word. Amen. Amen. That the dispensation, hallelujah, how many, you know, note that word? Count the letters in it, 12. We're in the year 2012. Dispensation, 12. There's just something about that word. You know what it has to do with? Stewardship. Hallelujah. Not only our stewardship, but the stewardship of the Father. What the Father is doing even in this hour. Hallelujah. What does that mean? Stewardship. Watchful care. The Heavenly Father is watching over His church like a shepherd, a good shepherd over the sheep. So He wants us to be watchful, caring over His Word like never before. Quite often, as the Lord has given it to me, like a weapon used, looking over that weapon, a hunting weapon, making sure it's clean, making sure it's ready, making sure that all is well. Hallelujah. So we need to look over the word, look it over, look it over, look it over, so we know what it's saying unto us, that we might obey it to the fullest, that we might hit that mark. Amen. That perfect mark. Hallelujah for the Lord that he might gather together in one all things in Christ. You know, God is in the, in the business of doing unity. Amen? Amen? He's in that process, hallelujah, bringing us together. Glory to God, hallelujah. All things in Christ, both that are in heaven and on earth, even in him, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and set him at the right hand in the heavenly places. That's powerful. Just the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, just sitting at the right hand of God, is a tremendous work. Hallelujah. And because all things are under his feet, he knows how to help us get all things under our feet. Hallelujah. Glory to God. As we learned this morning, we need to shake free from some things and get it under our feet. Hallelujah. So that they don't weigh us down. Boy, is God ever making that ever so clear to us in these last days. We are in a critical hour, hallelujah, and we don't want anything to hold us back. Far above, hallelujah, he's far above all principality and power and might, dominion, every name that is named, not only in this world, but also which is to come, hath he put un everything under his feet, all things, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Heaven came down and glory filled our soul. Hallelujah. But we need to agitate that glory. You know, glory unattended to will be like the clothing that they have in the, um, certain stores, faded glory. Amen. God's mercies are new every morning. Somebody say every morning. Every morning. God is renewing our spirit every day. Say every day. Every day. Hallelujah. And we want to be able to tap in all of that glory, all of that renewing, all of that restoring, all of that refreshing. Glory! <laughs> we could mention many other scriptures, but we need to recognize the most important thing, and that's ownership. By virtue of our willingness to see and hear the voice of the owner. Glory. And when we become willing and obedient to the faith, or God's word, that was preached to us through the gospel of Jesus Christ, we discover the answers for all our why fours, why we're here, and what purpose. Ephesians 1, 5 says, Having predestined us unto the adoption of children, child placement, right? 
by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. All right, why are we here? Or who are we, shall I say? Who are we? We're his. Man, I didn't know who I was. Can I tell you that? There was a time I had no idea who I was when I was a young man. When I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, I understood I was his. It helps to know who you are and whose you are. Why are we here? To do his will. To do our Father's will. For what purpose? To please him. For he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Hallelujah. That brings me great pleasure. That is what put a smile on my face. Quick testimony. Oh, boy, before I knew the Lord Jesus Christ, I looked at the world as being a very hateful world. How many have ever been there? Maybe not, but I was. The hateful world. And it felt like things were closed in on me. I felt like no freedom. I felt like the heavens weren't turning around. Amen. I couldn't see the glory of God. But when I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, things began to turn. I began to understand. And like I shared with the children on Wednesday night, which they love so much, the Lord spoke to me. I love you. Probably the greatest words you can hear from someone else. How many of you ever heard that spoken to you? I love you. Amen. I love you. That's an encouraging thing. Hallelujah. In a world whew, was quite the opposite. Because love is not just a word, is it? It is an action. It is a deed. It is a word, as we'll find as we go along today. 1 John 4, 6, we are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. Those are our true brothers and sisters. He that knoweth God heareth us. Hallelujah. He that is not of God heareth not us. Those are the false brethren. They're not even brethren, but those are the false anyway. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. We'll talk about the spirit of error in a bit. But there's a lot of spirit of error in this, in this world today. Unbelievably all over. It kind of reminds me of, you know, an army movie where the soldiers are going through to attack the enemy, but the field is loaded with a lot of dangerous traps ahead of the way. Ah, boy, oh boy, you need to know the voice of God so that we can avoid those traps because a lot of things are being spoken today that is not of God. And the only way that we can know if it is or isn't is we must be in God's Word. And the more we do that, it'll sound funny when it's not of God. But we can say amen when it is. Amen. That word amen means so be it. Why do I say amen so much? Because I want to say yes to my Lord and Savior. Yes to His will and to His way. Hallelujah. I don't want to have a no in my heart to God, but a yes. I want to be a yes man to Jesus Christ, who never lies. <laughs> Somebody might say, oh, Roger, you're just a yes man. Well, as long as you're telling the truth, I will be a yes man. But let me tell you, I won't shake my head, and I won't say amen if it's not God's word. Because I don't want to bring that into my spirit. Amen. In fact, I'm in the process of today of still getting out that which is not truth. Right. Still shaking myself free. Hallelujah. And so aren't you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. First John 4, 7. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth, God, knoweth not God, for God is love. A lot of times you'll find that people who say they're Christians and they're really not loving, that tells you something right there about them. You can be praying for them, but be very careful, okay? Be very careful if they're not loving, because that's a first sign that something is not right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, because God is always loving. He's always caring. 
And if there's anything that nourishes my soul, it's love tonight. Love feeds me. Love encourages me. Love keeps me going. And I serve a God of love. Amen. Since 1982. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I just want you to know I'm 30 years old. <laughs> I'm 30 years old tonight because I got saved in 1982 when I really committed my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean committed my life and began to submit to his will according to his word. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. I'm born again, so you know. <laughs> So are you. <laughs> you do your own math. <laughs> In this was manifest or expressed the love of God towards us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Hallelujah. See, love is always best expressed through him. We can't express true love in our own power, our own strength. In our own mindset, it's best expressed through Him. And if we're going to express ourselves through Him, we need His Word. Amen. Hallelujah. With His Word, hallelujah, we can express the Lord. And you'll find out how quickly those that love the Lord and those who don't, those who don't will run from us. Hallelujah. God's Word is powerful. Amen. It's quick, sharper than a two-edged sword. Hallelujah. I could tell many stories. Glory to God. Here in his love, not that we love God, but he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation. In other words, he took our debt and gave us a credit. He took our debt that we had before God and gave us a credit. And he gave us, understand, more than enough. Say that, more than enough. Not only did he redeem us, but he just gave us more than enough. We will always have a credit. When we're following our Lord and Savior, we will never lack. You know, <laughs> talk about the poverty spirit. You've got to shake that off yourself if you've been around it, because I've been around people who say, well, I just don't have. I just don't have. And they stay with that confession without understanding, yes, they do have. That's right. But they're going to the wrong source. Yep. Amen. They're looking to themselves we need to look to the Lord Jesus Christ. My God has supplied all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. And we just need to get it down into our heart that we don't lack. And it is true because I've been able to break that. When I go to the Father, I know immediately, you know, he has a, when I go to him, shall I show you what the Father is like as far as I'm concerned? He already knows what I'm asking for, so he's, he just has his wallet ready, so to speak, his heavenly wallet. Well, what do you need, son? <laughs> I've gone to him one time, and uh, I was being asked to do some things that where I had worked, and, uh, and as far as I'm concerned, that the enemy was stealing my time. And, I, and, and the Scripture says you can have seven times that back. And so I began to tell my Father in Heaven, that, you know, this isn't right. I went seven times back. Well, sure enough, the person that I had to do this service for, man, just started pulling out, I mean, a lot of money just to cover that little bit of time. I got more than enough. And as I figured it out, it was seven times. Amen. Now, let me not just stop there. I used my faith. And the next time it happened, I said nine times. Amen. <laughs> nine times it came back to me. <laughs> Not only did they bring it out, hallelujah, but I got paid, you know, paid twice. <laughs> Can I tell you that God will provide? But you have not if you ask not. I do not like, I do not like the poverty spirit. I grew up under foot of the poverty spirit. <laughs> but I tell you what, Jesus conquered the poverty spirit. Proving so, he sits at the right hand of the Father. Hallelujah. That's so good to know. Oh. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. We need to love others, lead others to that benefactor. 
No man has seen God at any time, but if we love one another, God dwells in us and his love is perfected in us. Showing love reveals our status as a Christian, and i got to say it again because I don't want you to miss it. Showing love to each other shows our status as a Christian. If we're not loving one another, we're not walking with our Savior. All right. Yes. Hallelujah. When Christians show love one to another, God or Jesus can be seen and understood much better. When Christians do not love one another, it becomes difficult to see God and Jesus, and they're left to their own searching. I was watching a movie just last night about a 17-year-old in the church. This poor fella, according to the movie, had a problem. He started cutting himself. That's a sad state of affairs. The youth minister who was ministering to him discovered what his problem was as he brought it forth, as he spent some time with him and showed love. He said, I haven't been hugged since I was eight years old. Eight years old, crying for love. And that included his own father. And so... <clears throat> There was opportunities to bless this young man. Unfortunately, this church was refusing it. This youth minister just kept telling him, you know, it was a mis mistake. Well, he almost lost his life cutting himself after his father had left. But I want you to know, the, it caught on as he spoke to the pastor. It woke him up. He apologized to his own wife, apologized to his own child, apologized to the congregation, said, we're going to change. We're going to change some things. You know what they did? They all went to the hospital. While he was in that hospital recovering and gave him a hug. Oh, gave him a hug. Hallelujah. Are we loving to each other? All right, think about that for a moment. Jesus teaches us the danger in the last days concerning love. Matthew 24, 12, dangers. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall grow cold. Iniquity is lawlessness. I know my dear brother Lee understands that. Hallelujah. Because he blesses me with many emails of what's going on around this world. Here's some examples of lawlessness. Legalized abortions. Legalized gay marriages. Legalized illegal immigrations. <laughs> Legalized antichrist agendas. So much. It is this ungodliness that will pave the way for other last day events. Second Thessalonians 2 Thessalonians 2.3 says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there be, or except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now I'm getting to the heart of this message. How do hearts fall or fade away from God? How does it happen? Any relationship that is not kindled by some type of letter, deed, or word is a relationship that can lose its fire. Distance is not a problem, for that can cause the love to grow fonder. <laughs> the problem is dialect, which is the manner or means of expressing oneself. We're drawn in a relationship one to another through means of expression, a smile, an action, an activity, or simply a conversation. You know, I was talking to the children really quick uh, this, uh, this past Wednesday. Boy, did we have a good time in the Lord there. And uh, I said, how many of you have a friend? And how did you get that friend? And it was interesting how the majority of the children says, because that other child wanted to play with me. But we also understood that we have friends because people are willing to talk to us. That is so important, and I can't uh, emphasize that enough in regards to relationship. We become exposed to our mates as a result of expression. If that expression decreases in matrimony, it is generally the result of some type of neglect, oversight, laziness, idleness. We could add to it not punching in your card with the Lord, 
Hallelujah. And remember this morning's word from Zephaniah 1.12. Men are on their lees. <laughs> In reference to their responsibility before God. They got to get off their duffs. Love is work. Any amens to that? Love is work. I've seen it in my own marriage. Love, but you know, you get to practicing what you need to do, it comes easier. But we must not neglect that part. It is usually the result, if it decreases, of change interest resulting from expression coming from another direction, be it work, sport, person, etc. God gave this to me three weeks ago. God knows what's going to happen in these days ahead. And let me clue you on it. The devil will do everything he can to try to get your eyes off your responsibility. Everything. It is the battle of the wills. My will or God's will. You know, and the devil is working overtime, amen, with all these illegal, legalized illegal things. Hallelujah. Don't focus on that. All right? Don't focus on the faults. Hallelujah. Because you'll yield to that what you focus on. Am I right? You will yield to that what you focus on. Ungodliness always comes through temptation, and temptation comes through a spirit that is not of God. We're told in 1 John 4, 1, 2, and 3, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they're of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. All right? Hereby know we the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. I like that scripture. Because why? Well, let me just tell you two false religions that are out there today. Jehovah Witnesses and the Mormons. And I can tell you right now, they don't believe that. They do not believe that Jesus is God in the flesh, according to John 1, verse 14. Amen. The Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I believe that with all my heart. Every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist. Whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. This shows how close it is to the coming of the Lord. You know, when the enemy knows the time is close like that, he does everything he can. And we're seeing religions popping up all over the place. New Bibles being produced all over the place that are false, false, false. Say, Satan is able to fool unsuspecting, unwatching, unalert Christians who are not abiding in God's word, work in God's way. Can I say this? You know, here's something that a Christian must not practice. Relying on just doing the work of the Lord for their salvation. What do, I, what do I mean? Well, I go to church every Sunday. Well, I give my tithe, you know. It's so much more than that, my friends. It's so much more than all the, the things that you're going through, coming here, going home, you know. It's what you do when you leave here. <laughs> it's your relationship. It's what, who you're trusting. Who's your daddy? Amen. Who you're looking to? To help you every day. Amen. There's so much importance to that. Realizing you can't live a successful life, a prosperous life right now, without the help of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Without his Holy Spirit working in you and through you. Hallelujah. You know, when you got saved, you realized you couldn't save yourself. God help. You know, if you're there, oh, you know. Come into my heart, you know, forgive me my sins. How quickly the Lord heard that cry. Does it change? You know, just because we're a Christian doesn't mean we, we rely on him less. We learn to rely on him more, amen? <laughs> amen. 
more. Somebody say more. More. Hallelujah. God is a spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. 1 John 4, 4. False, or 1 John, yeah. Uh, no, that's, that's John, let me think. God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. I think it's John 4, 24. False prophets and preachers and false people are everywhere in this world. They do the same things we try to do to reach a lost and dying world. They preach. They teach, they evangelize. Wow. Amen? A little tricky there. The, the danger is the doctrine and what they believe. If it's not God's word, it becomes a detour or a detour of our deliverance that we have in Jesus Christ. You see, the word that's in us is already greater than Satan's word, Satan's power, Satan's destructive ways. So the only way that he can stop us of having that victory and being free all the time, hallelujah, is to lie to us. Hallelujah. But the Scripture says you have overcome the world, hallelujah, even by your faith, 1 John 5, 4, according to the Word of God, hallelujah. I can't place enough emphasis on hearing the Word of God tonight, even for myself, to hear the Word of God to know the Word of God, to know it in your heart, and to rely upon that Word like never before. I've got to finish this message because we're getting late, but let me say this. God does not change. Our deliverance remains the same. Romans 8, 1, 2, 3, and 4. I must read it. There is therefore no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. What is that life? Salvation. Hallelujah. Hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Temptation. Hallelujah. But it starts with faith. And it ends with faith. Hallelujah. But what remains? Love. Love never stops. God wants us to be in love with him for all eternity. It'll be just a natural thing for the believers who are loving him to just go right into the next realm. Even now, the Lord has taken you realm to realm to realm, spiritual realm, every day without you realizing it. Amen. We know we're positioned, but he has taken you to a, one of these days. It's just going to be a quick snatching away. Wouldn't it be awesome if he did it even here tonight? Are you ready? God's time clock is moving. It's going to stop. We need to be ready. Praise the Lord, and that uh, wraps things up for us here tonight. Um, we do, again, appreciate all of you for hanging in there with us, um, and uh, we thank the Lord we were able to get that audio on. Lord, we just thank you again for all that you're doing through Ustream, Lord, and how you're just working mightily in people's lives. Lord, even right now tonight, Lord, I can just feel your presence, Lord, as, Lord, you're just working on people's hearts right now. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that the blind eyes are being opened now, Lord, that the deaf ears are hearing now in the name of Jesus. MS has to go right now in the name of Jesus. RA has to go right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that the lame are walking in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we just praise you. We give you the praise and the glory and the honor right now in Jesus' name, Lord, even as people are coming up out of their wheelchairs, Lord. We just thank you for all that you're doing. And we give unto you the praise and the glory and the honor right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, we thank all of you for bearing with us. And um, we will see you again next week. God bless you.